You know, there's a lot of work in supernovas. This is really interesting. You know, there's two kinds. One is, you know, thermonuclear, one is core collapse. You know, we're really very interested in accreting white dwarfs and stuff. You know, can we measure this stuff? We use these as stellar candles. And we can make these conditions inside the NIF, not of, uh, uh, of, of the white dwarf, but of the accreting uh, star. And also we can look at, look at core collapse, which is really another incredibly interesting question. If you look at what's going on in a supernova when it lights off, you know, we're all stardust from no a supernova, right? I think everyone knows that. Er everything above Z equals uh, iron, you know, you know, the chair you're sitting on and all that stuff came from some supernova somewhere. In fact, uh, most of our Earth does too. Uh, what, where did that come from? How did it get out? Most models don't describe effectively how material could escape from a supernova. And this is turbulent mix in a very complex environment. And we think that we now, and people who are at the University of Michigan, Paul Drake and others around the world, are proposing experiments that you can do on the NIF that you can do this. And, and the reason this is so important is because even the biggest computers we have now, which are now coming to petaflop scale, or have very low resolution on the hydrodynamic scale that we need uh, to do this. And this is the helium shell breakup, allow coarse, coarse spikes to escape. What's the difference between 3D and 2D spike velocities? The, you know, in our calculations, it's unresolved completely. And how do 3D perturbations on multiple interfaces interact? One of the things that's so interesting about the NIF, it's, all, it's the first machine you have the proper scale that you can do interesting 3D experiments. To date, everyone has had such a small scale, you work so hard to get rid of 3D because they're so comp you can't unwind them that you do everything you can to do 2D. Now we'll be in a situation where we can do 3D experiments. And this is a proposal that Paul has made working with Bruce Remington, where if you look on the target on your right, you know, you can see these ridges. This is a millimeter scale target. You can see these ridges that are put in to show multi-interface diverging geometries. And uh, it's never been done before. And this might be a clue to understanding supernova, you know, and the escape of heavy elements. Um, another thing that's going on that we're very interested in is extrasolar planets. Right now, there's, it's kind of interesting. There used to be nine planets, now there's eight, right? Uh, in our solar system. <clears throat> but every day almost, and I, there's a great plot of this, which unfortunately I didn't bring, the number of planets we're aware of has, is going up. Unfortunately, very few of them look like anything we expected. Well, fortunately, every, very few of them look like anything we expected. You know, they're bigger, they're closer to the sun. The terrestrial planets we've met, you know, look very large, 10 times the density of the Earth. Of course, they're not that much bigger than the Earth, but they're 10 times the density. And when you, uh, you know, as we discover more and more, and Kepler was just, more, uh, was just launched, we're going to have a, just an explosion of these. The reason that this is uh, uh, interesting, I've heard, recently heard a talk about this, there are no models that describe how these planets come to being. And in fact, uh, if we look at them, you see that the pressure, again, in the x-axis, going <clears throat> from uh, 10 to the minus 2 megabar up to like 10 Jupiter masses, 10 to the minus 4 megabar in temperature is correlated. But they have very long ranges over which they work. And we cannot come up with an understanding of this. So how does NIF play a role in this? And the answer is, in, again, in this view graph, a little bit hard to see, we have the ability to shock or bring ramp up to the appropriate temperatures and pressures, which is, by the way, cold temperatures, high pressures, cold thousands of degrees, you know, all the conditions of all those planets. And we'll be able to start uh, quantifying the equation of state for these materials as they go. Look, NIF is an integral part of a growing community of large-scale HED facilities worldwide. 
We're not the only ones. Uh, and this is very exciting. This field, 10 years from now, I believe will be like high energy physics was in the 30s and 40s after Lawrence invented the accelerator and people were doing it. This is, this is what's going on in our universe. I think it's a tremendous opportunity. I think it's all being driven by lasers and optical systems, period. You know, this is where it is. Photons are what it's about. I really believe this will be a part of the 21st photon century. And, I, and it's kind of exciting to be a part of it. Um, we're working on growing these user communities. And it's really, the science is, is, you know, because of our observatories in space are getting growing interest. But I do want to say, and I want to leave you with this thought. I know a lot of people work on this. Can you imagine instead of just looking through telescopes or satellites, optical systems, creating on Earth, on a schedule that you can define, these very phenomena in the laboratory so you can do experiments on otherworldly or astrophysical bodies so we can do experimental science and observational science together. It'll be, it'll be quite exciting. So let me just close. You know, building NIF has been really a challenging and exciting journey. It'll be nothing compared to using the NIF. You know, the, the last you know, 12 years have been a challenge, but it's here. You know, I think we have a way to do <clears throat> fusion energy, understand that. And I also think we have a way to do basic frontier science. It'll all be because of lasers, laser optical systems, and the thing that our community is continuing to develop at the rate it's developing it. Thank you so much.